Hi Bay Cities, um, I'm here just to uh, offer some encouragement and to let you know that as a church we're praying for you and we're thinking about you all the time uh, during all this craziness. There's so much stuff going on in our world right now. Um, it just seems to be getting harder, um, but we're here as a church to love you and to pray for you and to encourage you to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. And um, today I just wanted to talk a little bit about the transition that's coming. Um, most of us who have kids at home know that summer is right around the corner and that's going to bring a whole set of uh, different kinds of things we're going to have to deal with. Um, we've just gone through all this uh, school at home and now our kids are going to be home for the summer. So just want to encourage you and one of the things I've really been praying about and thinking about is that um, if we're going to grow closer to God, we really have to distance ourselves from the things that are distracting us. And um, that comes in all kinds of packages, um, whether you're young, whether you've been a Christian a long time, whether you're a new Christian, we deal with distractions uh, and all kinds of things that take us away from God. And um, for me personally, um, about a year and a half ago, um, I was feeling very overwhelmed and distracted by the things that I had to do and get accomplished and I felt like I was losing my quiet time and um, it was one morning in particular and it was a day I had off and I felt like I had a, a, a immense amount of things to do and I remember praying that morning um, to God and just saying, you know, I want my to-do list to be yours, Lord, and um, just show me what it is that you want me to accomplish today, not the things that I want to accomplish. And that's one of the things that I've learned is sometimes it completely takes away the things that you thought you really wanted to do when you submit and you just ask God. And um, I, my day kind of went on and I finished uh, my prayer and um, I had done all my errands and I was on my last errand. and. Um, I was at Smart Final, and um, in particular, I just had a grocery cart full of groceries, and I was loading them in my car. And lo and behold, I turned around and I locked my keys and my purse and my cell phone all in my car. And I have owned my car for 12 years, and I have never once locked my keys in my car. And I just thought, huh, this is really interesting. So. I um, walked across the street to uh, my dry cleaners, and he's actually, um, I've known him for years, is a fellow believer. And I said, Wang, I can't believe this, but I've locked everything in my car. I said, could you call AAA for me and um, let me use your phone and I'll call my sister. And so I told Karen, I said, you know, I don't have an extra set of keys, so I'm just gonna sit here and wait for a AAA. And uh, Wang goes, yeah, I, I called AAA, and you're not gonna believe this, but they cannot be here for an hour and a half. And he goes, I've never heard of that. And I thought, oh goodness. So I looked at my watch and I saw what time it was and what time the kids were going to get out of school and I had time and so I went and sat on the bumper of my car and I just remember bowing my head and I said, okay Lord, there is something that you want to show me today and um, show me what that is and what that looks like. And I op put my head up and I immediately saw a woman across the parking lot and it was very, very clear to me that I had to go to her. and. Um, I just started walking towards her and she was probably in her mid-70s and she was very well dressed and I walked up to her and I said, you know, my name is Nikki. I said, do you need help? And she turned around and she said, well, I actually I do. She says, I can't remember where I parked my car and um, I, I, I'm very turned around and, and I'm not familiar with this area and she said, will you help me find my car? And I said, sure. I said, apparently I have about an hour and a half to kill so I will be glad to walk around with you and, and try to find your car. So we started chatting and we walked several parking lots and a couple streets and um, she had described the car and where she thought it was and, and her answers were kind of vague when I was asking her about what time it was and what she was doing and um, we walked for probably about a half hour, 40 minutes looking for a car. And, then I asked her about the description again and it kind of changed a little bit. And then her story started to change a little bit about where she thought it was. And so I, something didn't seem right. So I, I got her to walk back with me over to the dry cleaners and uh, she sat down we had some water. And I called my sister and I said, you know, I think, I think she's really confused. And Karen goes, I think we should call the police. And I said, all right, you know, 
okay if that's what you think but you know she seems you know like she's together and Karen goes well sometimes you know she might have just had some dementia or some memory loss and so um, I went and told her that we were gonna get some help and um, so we walked the parking lot a couple more times because she was sure she thought she knew where her car was and um, about 15 minutes later the police officer came and he pulled me aside and he said, well, why did you decide to call the police? And I said, I don't know, something just didn't seem right. And he said, well, it's a really good thing you called because she was reported as a missing person um, two days ago. And I immediately was just overcome with just, just such gratitude. And, you know, she had let me look in her wallet and, and get her ID and everything. And her name was Sarah Sue. And um, I just felt so privileged and blessed to be used in that way and so I went back in and asked him if I could sit with her and t he said an ambulance was coming because she was probably dehydrated so I sat with her and um, she held my hand for the whole the whole time that we sat there and I started asking her questions about her life and and things that she could recall and we just we had just the sweetest conversation and and I'll never forget she like looked at me right as the ambulance came and and they were hooking her up and taking her away and she said you know thank you so much for helping me and it, it I just burst into tears because um, I felt like this is what obedience looked like and and I then I got sad because I thought you know there's probably many other opportunities that I've missed in my life that God wanted to use me but I was too busy or too distracted or uh, or too inconvenience to see them and and Sarah Sue changed my life and and what God showed me through her was that it doesn't matter how uh, old you are how young you are or um, how seasoned you are or how broken you are um, God is gonna find a way to use you especially when you ask him and I remember um, the Sunday I went I, I always tell the kids everything at Sunday school and I remember telling them the story and They've asked me to retell that story probably three or four times. And I always tell them, you know, you can be used too. You just have to be, have a willing heart. And that's why it's so important to give God those first moments of the day because then he can direct your day and, um, and really use you in, in mighty ways. And, um, and, and that's what I want to impress upon you today is, and, and especially with your kids. Um, I tell my kids all the time, there are things vying for our attention. Um, adults and kids and and they look different in all families you know it can be work it can be um, something that's that's worthy of your time but not all your time that takes that away from God and so um, my goal for my children um, as summer comes now that they've had you know all this time at home is is just to make sure that they're giving God the first moments of their day and asking him to direct their day and um, and not waiting you know um, and not to miss opportunities because he has so much to show us and so many th ways to use us and um, it's really a great thing and um, I'm just grateful really grateful for that so I just want to encourage you to to pray about that and to see what that looks like in your own life in the life of your own family as, as we head into a new season um, summer's coming and we as a church have come up with an on-site plan. We're very excited. Um, so if you want more information about that, please visit our website at baycitieslamita.com slash coronavirus.